Hey guys, and welcome to the Working Money Channel. I haven't just seen this from Wall Street Silver, I gotta say. I've been seeing it from a lot of people on Twitter, and so I thought I would tackle this situation and some other theories that I had um, by looking at some other articles that were floating around crypto Twitter within the XRP community. Well, Wall Street Silver points this out, and I think you guys have probably been noticing this as well, the tweets regarding Credit Suisse and how they're probably going to go bankrupt. So, is this going to be another domino that falls, guys, that really does create strife, turmoil, insolvency, a liquidity problem in financial markets? We know Credit Suisse, a huge company, the collapse in Credit Suisse's share price is of great concern, he says, from $14.90 in February of 2021 to $3.90 currently. And with a BP of 0.22, markets are saying it's insolvent and probably going to go bust. So is this a 2008 moment that we are seeing for Credit Suisse Systemic Risk Bank? And I showed a similar chart with regards to Credit Suisse in a video I did just yesterday. If you guys didn't catch that, I will link that up here in the top right-hand corner. But this is definitely setting off a lot of alarm bells. Uh, Tuamis here, Malinin, also posted this. I'm having a really bad deja vu moment from 2008. During that summer... I often worried that so many people really did not know what was about to hit. And um, I mean, for, for for the sake of argument, retail really didn't know what was going to happen. And uh, sure enough, a lot of people lost their shirts. If you guys were around for that time, you probably remember either yourselves or uh, people you know, or, you know, if you were younger, maybe your parents, uh, people were losing their 401ks because they were invested in the stock market and the stock market plummeted at that point uh, to historic levels. During that summer, I often worried that so many people really didn't know what was about to happen. Same as now, people live their lives without understanding that our financial world may shatter as early as next week. Ouch. So, warning shots have been fired. Let me just bring up the S&P 500 here for you guys. I'm going to throw it on the weekly just real quickly uh, to show you guys just to, um, you know, just to demonstrate what we did see back in 2000. And eight, all those uh, years ago. Huge moment, okay? This is what movies were based on, like the big short. Throwing a Fibonacci up here, and this happened to be in October of 2007, before we started to see the slow cascade down. Okay, we did see retracement levels hit. We did see it come back to the 0.702 back in August of 2008. And finally hit rock bottom by February or March of 2009. And from that point forward, we did see an increase, okay? So... This entire collapse took about four, 530 days, 520, 530 days, give or take. So the collapse happened over the period of a year, basically from all-time high to all-time low. And so it was almost like people weren't believing it until we really got into the nitty-gritty by uh, October 2008. I remember uh, watching the news, and I wasn't really in finance at that point, but I remember it being pretty crazy. Um, I, I got into finance, I got into trading shortly thereafter in 2010 or 2011. Actually, it was 2011, so it was on the upswing. Confidence was back in the market, but at this point, people were losing their shirts, their houses, everything. If you haven't seen The Big Short, one of my favorite movies about finance, actually probably my favorite movie about finance. So let me just throw that Fibonacci back on here just real quickly to give you guys a sense of uh, where we are today. And we know when a Fibonacci, you know, hits its peak, that is generally the sign that the market is going to turn around. Not just for cryptocurrency, for everything. Um, and it did. It hit its peak back in November of 2021 when Bitcoin hit its peak and many other financial assets. And so now we are starting to see this free fall. We talked a little bit about um, how this level here on the S&P 500 broke back on the 19th of September. So we are actually now below former support that was formed uh, over here in June of 2022. So I guess the question now is how far are we going to go down and um, are we to assume that this may have been the 702 retracement once we find the bottom? Well, where would that uh, bottom be? Whoops. Where would that bottom be if that were the case? Uh, if that were the case, and uh, let's say that is the 0.702, I mean, we do not know this yet. That would mean the S&P would still have to tumble uh, about another 10%, 10-11%. All the way down here 318 so it's looking like we are in a collapsing event i kind of just want to get back on topic here credit suisse is not the only major bank whose price to book is flashing warning signals the list below is of uh, other companies gsibs i don't know what that is it gives a list down here with p2bs or price to book of under 40 percent a failure of one of them is likely to call the survival of others into question so just giving you guys uh, some other examples of companies or banks big banks that could be in trouble so in yesterday's video, I did also talk about uh, Deutsche Bank, uh, but Credit Agricole, but Credit Agricole, Unicredit, Barclays, big bank in England, 
the Bank of China, the Société Générale, I believe that's in France, Standard Charter, so on and so forth. So this is their price to book ratio. And um, I, I don't quite know too much about price to book ratio, but it sounds as though these guys are in trouble. I think there's actually an explanation down here. Yeah, Truth Seeker asks, can someone explain to me price to book ratio? And uh, Tommy Sand down here says, the bank says it has cash and stuff worth $100 and you can buy the bank for $25. It means other people don't actually think the bank is worth what it says it's worth. So that's not too good, is it? When we're seeing these bank to, uh, or price to bank ratios under 40%. So is this another Lehman Brothers situation, guys? Lehman Brothers 2.0. This brought to us by Michael Branch here on Twitter. The black swan that no one expected potentially appeared in the market after the crypto and financial community sparked a series of discussions about the worrisome state of one of the biggest investment banks in the world, Credit Suisse, which could be dangerously close to defaulting and causing a massive crash on the markets. The story began with ABC Australia's post about a major financial bank being on the brink of a default. The news outlet was not, uh, or rather has not pointed out which bank is, uh, is in the state mentioned in the article, but financial experts and economists already had a suspect in mind, and this is why everybody was pointing to Credit Suisse. One of the world's biggest investment banks is Credit Suisse with around $1.5 trillion uh, in assets under management, and they have not been uh, in the best state over the last year. The bank's stock plunged by more than 60% through the year and tumbled from almost $10 to $3.95. However, the poor performance on the bank is not the only thing that causes issues. The cost of the bank's credit uh, default swaps has skyrocketed, reaching the highest level since 2008. The 2008 market catastrophe... The CDs is a popular instrument that acts as a hedge against a potential default. And so this is what the problem is. To get into that in more depth, guys, I'm going to read you this tweet thread, a very informative thread by Rajat Kumar Singh, okay? Credit Suisse and Deutsche Bank are on the verge of collapse. A thread on the ongoing crisis at DB, which is uh, Deutsche Bank and, and CS, which is Credit Suisse, as per my limited understanding. He goes on to say, the combined asset base of the two banks is nearly $2 trillion, which is 3x the asset base of Lehman Brothers at the time of its collapse. Now, of course, you know, it, it's been a decade plus since the Lehman Brothers collapse. So, um, you know, there, there is more to the assets. I don't know if you were to adjust it uh, in terms of inflation, if it would be roughly the same or more or less. It doesn't really matter, though. On September the 15th, 2008, Lehman Brothers, a bank considered too big to fail, filed for insolvency. It was the single largest bankruptcy filing in the history of the U.S., at the time, the bank had $639 billion in assets and $619 billion in debt. Both Credit Suisse and Deutsche Bank are designated uh, as systematically important financial institutions, or sci-fis. They are too big to fail. Remember the times when they labeled Lehman Brothers too big to fail. So there's all kinds of sources here too, guys, which I will link in the description of the video. The stocks of Deutsche Bank and Credit Suisse have been slowly bleeding out since 2009, and both are down about 90% from their 2009 high. So this was the chart that I showed you guys the other day. Since that high back from over a decade ago, they are now at historic lows. The credit default swaps or CDSs for Credit Suisse are going absolutely vertical and are now approaching the highs of the great financial crisis of 2008. Higher CDSs equal strong market-wide belief that Credit Suisse is going to fail. Uh, and a CDS is a derivative that allows an investor to swap or offset their credit risk with another investor. To swap the risk of default, the lender buys the CDS from another investor who agrees to reimburse them if the borrower defaults. So what does this crisis mean in layman's terms? Well, one, if the bank can't pay off their debts, they become insolvent and have to sell off their assets. If the prices of these assets fall below a certain level, the other banks too will have to start selling to avoid the forceful margin calls on their position, i.e. there is going to be a liquidity problem, guys. This massive deleveraging event will cause a domino effect due to mass selling, and this economic crisis will spread from one market region to another, known as contagion. Though there is a good chance that the German government will go all out to save Deutsche Bank because it's the biggest bank in Germany, but the size of the bailout is a matter of concern. So he's just bringing us some figures here. Deutsche Bank, an example of how much their assets are worth and Credit Suisse. So pretty big financial organizations here. No one really knows when the system will start collapsing, but when it does, it will be extremely brutal. It's a ticking time bomb. FYI, this thread is based on my limited knowledge and I reserve the right to be wrong, of course. Take it easy, take care, be safe. Basically, guys, though, a domino effect that could happen. These banks, uh, although they're not hugely talked about in the United States, for example, they still are very influential and could create something of a cascading effect. Now, that kind of begs the question that may have been on some people's minds. I'm going to put these two things together here. Michael Branch posting this. Why hasn't the 1 billion XRP been moved out of escrow this month? 
It is now October the 3rd, guys, and we have not seen the XRP leave escrow. Today is October the 3rd, uh, and the first of the month was on Saturday, when over the past few years, it has been traditional for Ripple to unleash a whopping billion XRP. This month, the withdrawal has not taken place. Ripple began releasing the 1 billion at the start of 2018 in order to support the token's liquidity and injected it into circulation every time over the past two years, blah, blah, blah. Uh, you know, they, they, it is giving us the details, but the bigger takeaway here, where the heck did the 1 billion XRP go for October of 2022? Some theories about this. Guys, remember yesterday when I was talking about how trading volume has suddenly increased by 542%. Uh, I talked about this article in yesterday's video. XRP trading volume suddenly rose more than 500% per coin market cap data. However, the price of XRP did not make a move. So this is focusing on uh, more or less the price. But now I want to focus on the volume. Even Alex Cobb was making note of this. XRP volume at all-time high, $26 billion. Is someone preparing for a pump? Well, now it's having me think something else. Now that we're realizing, well, the escrow wasn't released as well. We have all this volume, no escrow released. Is something going on behind the scenes, perhaps getting ready to unleash liquidity because of what they're seeing over there in Europe? And this kind of falls directly in line with a liquidity provider. Obviously, the XRP can be used uh, in this type of capacity because this problem is not even happening in the United States right now. So the SEC lawsuit will have nothing to do with this if indeed they are looking, preparing to be using XRP if something happens with Credit Suisse and Deutsche Bank. This is just my opinion, guys. It is certainly something we should be looking into. Uh, and Stefan Hubert was asked a question, mate, uh, what do you make of Ripple not releasing the 1 billion from escrow on October the 1st? And Stefan Hubert just brings up a good point. They can't just stop the release of the escrow, even if they wanted, it's an escrow. So the escrow is happening uh, automatically. So finally, perhaps an explanation. Thank goodness for Crypto Eddie here at Cento Sumo Saba seeing shared articles that Ripple didn't release escrow this month. Face palm. They are not checking the escrow wallet. So it looks as though the escrow has indeed been released. October the 1st, 2022, uh, 300 million, then another 200 million. And then uh, right over here, 500 million. So, you know, people saying thank you for clearing this up. Uh, even XRP Homegirl wrote, not too proud to admit, I erroneously didn't check the address myself upon seeing it. Thanks for sharing. So it does look like it has been released, actually. But that actually begs some more questions. Do you guys remember how much XRP was supposed to be released over what amount of time? Somebody else brought up a good point. They apparently were only supposed to be releasing the 1 billion XRP over 55 months. And 55... So this was an article back from 2017. To provide the additional predictability of the XRP supply, Ripple has locked 55 billion XRP, or 55%, in, uh, in the escrow. These escrows were on the ledger itself, and the ledger mechanics enforced by consensus controls the release of XRP. The escrow consists of independent on-ledger escrow that has released a total of 1 billion XRP each month over the next 55 months. Now, this was, uh, at least this was written in December of 2017. If we bring up just a calculator here and uh, just calculate 55 divided by 12 months, that means it should just be over four and a half years. So all of 2018, all of 2019, all of 2020, all of 2021, and now we are past the midway point of 2022. So this would definitely make sense if now the escrow is supposed to come to a close. But now the question is, why now? Is technically, at least in terms of what the optics are, has not even been implemented yet. Unless this was in the works and has been planned, since the beginning, mid to late 2022, this is when the proverbial crap was going to hit the fan, or at least this was the plan for the powers that be, that want to take down the financial system and rebuild it with DLT technology, running liquidity through RippleNet and XRP. I mean, it's a bit of a far out theory, guys, but kind of not really. I mean, when we're looking at all the moving parts to this. Now, I also wanted to bring you guys this from Matthew LINY, the DLT debt transparency platform might be implemented to slow down a systemic meltdown of capital markets. 
Uh, did I also mention, sorry, I don't even remember. Did I mention ISO 20022? Supposed to begin to be implemented by November of 2022. That also falls in line with the timeline. Ripple is one such company working with G20 central banks for blockchain payment instruments. So there was also this, I talked about, uh, I talked a little bit about this yesterday, how the ICC calls on the G20 to take the risk of a global debt crisis off the table and how it's time to implement a tech driven sovereign debt transparency initiative, concept design and policy actions. And uh, look what they say down here. Well, it is certain that the private sector can play a major role in disciplining the sovereign debt borrowers via registering and sharing key information on the individual debt transactions. This is much easier if data from the largest private lenders and creditors is registered, pooled, uh, recorded and stored in an independent global repository, uh, f uh, the form of an online platform that can be accessible not only in the international financial institutions, and then they give an example here, the WBG and the IMF, but also to civil society organizations, donors and debt charities. The platform can be powered using digitalization, in particular distributed ledger technology. And again, as Matthew LINY points out, Ripple is one such blockchain company working with G20 already to perform these tasks. So to me, it's looking like, yeah, maybe there is something going on behind closed doors. Maybe this is just another step, Ripple getting poised, Ripple getting ready, because, I mean, if you were to believe this theory, we already kind of know that the financial system is a house of cards. And if we were to believe that the powers that be want to tear down the financial system purposely and implement a new system as per their Great Reset Initiative, well, then it kind of makes sense that they pick on certain banks that have influence. Um, and if these banks are barely hanging on by a thread and they've been propping them up for decades, well, who's to say that they can't say, okay, now it's time for Credit Suisse to drop. Let's prepare everything. Let's ramp up the volume here over 542% now running through the XRP ledger and Alex Cobb pointing it out, $26 billion now going through the XRPL within the last 24 hours. Things that make me go, hmm. And Riz XRP posting this, uh, what does Louise Lamata say? The bigger the base, the higher in space. They were talking about this back in 2018 when XRP was forming a large base on the chart. I just want to play you guys this. Obviously down from the peaks up here, right? The whole crypto market has kind of gone sideways here. But what does Louise Yamada say? The bigger the base, the higher in space. In my view, you have to have people start using that XRP, that Ripple currency, in substitute for foreign currency, but that's the utility. That's the use case for Ripple, the currency. If that's the case, then that's a pretty nice base right there. If that's the case, well, that's a pretty damn good looking base. That's just my opinion. But I want to hear what you guys think. Please subscribe to the channel if you haven't already. Like the video if you like the content I'm providing. I always love hearing your comments. See you in the next one, guys.